I got to try out Zhiyun's Q2 gimbal for about a day and I'm going to compare it with my Vlog Pocket with the experience I had. For those who've seen my review of the Vlog Pocket, we all know how much I love the portability, the size, and the ease of use. The smaller size still stands true of the Vlog Pocket. It is smaller when it's folded, but once you start using it, it is bigger by a little bit, not by much. Now here's a list of what I like about the Vlog Pocket over the Q2. First is the compactness. We know that this wins and it is more pocketable with bigger pockets. Second is the ease of use. The button functions are really easy to remember and is more beginner friendly. I love the trigger button on the back. It makes it so much easier to use and is more comfortable. Now switching orientation is also easier on the vlog pocket. You double press the front button and it switches. So this is really useful when you want to shoot something on Snapchat and Instagram on the fly. These gimbals are really light, but if weight is really important to you, the vlog pocket is lighter. Another feature that I do like on a vlog pocket is the locking point because when you have it off and while you're walking around the city, it locks and it doesn't go everywhere. And my favorite thing about a vlog pocket is when you're shooting in ultra wide mode, you don't see the motor at all. Now moving on to the ZMQ2, here's what I like over the vlog pocket. First up is the quality. When I first held it, it feels really expensive. And a vlog pocket is all made out of plastic, so that's all you feel versus the Q2 when you held it is a nice rubber grip, so that's not going to go anywhere. It's really secure in a hand and a lot of metal. And for battery, I can see how much life it has with the four LED in the front versus the vlog pocket where there's only one LED and I don't know when it runs out until I see a red light. And the bottom of the handle is much wider, so when I put it down, I'm more confident that it won't tilt over. Whether the gimbal is off or on, on a flat surface, I can easily place it down. Now this is my first time experiencing a quick release system on a phone gimbal. And so far I'm loving it because I can take off my phone, answer a quick text or do a quick Google search and then put it back on a gimbal without really doing much after. Because when I'm constantly taking a phone off the gimbal, every time I put it back, it's just a nuance and I just have to take off the spring. And we all know that the spring mechanism on these phone gimbals are really hard to put on and then you have to rebalance again. It just becomes um, really annoying. And if you're shooting with two phones consistently, maybe you can buy another one and put it on that phone so you can switch throughout the day. The Q2 also has a POV mode. So if you want to get those specific roll shots or that inception mode shot, then you can actually do that on this gimbal. And my last favorite thing I like about the Q2 is the standby mode. For those who've seen my Moza Mini S, uh, my experience with standby mode is like my favorite feature of that gimbal. So this one has it too. When I was using this throughout the day, my biggest con was no locking points. When walking around the city when the gimbal is off, my phone is just consistently swinging. Especially when I've used gimbals with locking points, I really can't go back with one without it. So who do I recommend these gimbals to? If you are a beginner, I would go for the Vlog Pocket. It's very beginner friendly and easy to use. Second is if you're a vlogger. If you don't really care about getting that specific cinematic shot or you just want to capture your moment of your day, then the Vlog Pocket does it well. Now for the Q2, I would recommend it straight for mobile filmmakers because when I first held it, when I first turned it on and used follow mode, I noticed how much smoother it is compared to the Vlog Pocket. If you see my Vlog Pocket review, I told you that it's not as smooth for follow mode, but this is completely different. This one is like five times smoother. So getting that specific cinematic shot or doing parallax shots or tilting shots, all those usual cinematic uh, gimbal shots, you can actually do it way easier on a Q2. For those gimbal users who know they're at extreme angles, they can actually feel the motors kicking back or vibrate. With the Q2, it doesn't really do that or I don't really feel it at all. So I know that these motors are strong enough to handle those extreme angles. And it does have a joystick, so some people really need that to get those tilting shots or get your phone to tilt faster. So in the end, one is more for vloggers, the other one is for mobile filmmakers. I love using both of these gimbals. It's so small and compact and I can easily travel with them. And if I'm just vlogging throughout the day and I don't care about getting that cinematic shot, the Vlog Pocket does this job so well. And those who are really getting serious into their mobile filmmaking, then the Q2 is so much better and is so much smoother in follow mode. So I would recommend that if you don't really like to vlog at all. So that is my comparison of the limited time I had with the Q2 versus the Vlog Pocket. I will have links down below if you guys are interested to check them out. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.